Thank you for joining us today, Tuesday, August 27th, uh, at our final council meeting of the month. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to suspend the rules by Mr. Gines. Second. And a second by Mr. McGilvery. If the clerk will read the revisions, please. We need to vote on it. Beg vote your pardon? On, vote on the suspension. Vote. I'm sorry, we do have to vote on it. All right. All in favor of suspending the rules? That's unanimous. Vote 6 0. Note for the record Mr. Lawrence is absent today. To the consent agenda, we're adding item 5Z resolution authorizing renewal of badge pass. I'll entertain a motion to um, approve the amended agenda. So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Glavin and a second by Mr. Gines. Any discussion? All in favor? That's a unanimous vote for the clerk. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the mayor's report. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to, at this time, invite Ms. Susan Hunt up for a little update. Well, you got to sign in. <laughs> Okay. All, all the birds. Red lady. Yeah. That's why they know I'm here. So I sign in. Using your real name, Miss Hunt. Thank Two, you. Three. I won't be long. Just remember Pearl Harbor, right? That's right. Remember Pearl Harbor. I'm only 41. Okay. I want to thank y'all for everything you do for the Coast of Mississippi Mardi Gras Museum. But I am really excited because we have a new executive director. And she, I, she is here with us today, and I'm introducing her, Abriza Thomas, come on up. And I've told her she can't talk as long as me, but that's okay. <laughs> but is gonna talk to you all, and then we will start coming back for every four months for our update. Abriza, say a few words to her. <laughs> Hi. You'll have to get close to the microphone so the world can hear you microphone as you speak. Yeah. There you go. Hey, everybody. It's nice to meet all of you. I'm very glad to be here and to continue working to grow the Mississippi Mardi Gras Museum. Very good. <laughs> good point. Good point. Thank y'all, because I know you have a budget meeting this afternoon. Thank you for the money you're going to give us today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hunt. Thank you. I, I, I like uh, this is uh, September is Childhood Cancer Month, and we've got a representative from St. Baldrop, right? And I want to read this proclamation again today and give you an opportunity to say some few words. But whereas September is designated as National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, whereas more than 15,000 children under the age of 19 will be diagnosed with cancer in the United States in 2024, including more than 120 in Mississippi, whereas cancer is the leading cause of death by disease among children in the United States, Nearly 500,000 survivors of childhood cancer are alive in the United States by age of 50, and more than 99% of childhood cancer survivors have had a chronic health problem, and 96% have experienced a severe or life-threatening condition caused by toxicity of the treatment that initially saved their life. Childhood cancer is the least funded cancer by the government, and it's up to the nonprofit organizations like St. Baldrop's Foundation to raise the much-needed funds. Now, therefore, I, Andrew Fofo Gillich, Mayor of Biloxi, Mississippi, do hereby proclaim the month of September 20, 2024 as National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So thank you. I don't think I need the mic. I'm Very good. Thank you. We're proud of everything you've done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I just want to say thank you to the Biloxi Police Department for putting the awareness uh, ribbons on your cars. That is. Ma'am. Ma'am. Okay. You have to grab the mic. the mic. Yeah, okay. thank I feel you. like Bob Barker holding this thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, that was monumental. I think it, I researched it. I think that was the first time ever that any police department in the state of Mississippi has ever recognized Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So that was huge for you guys to do this. And it means the world to these families. I've already gotten text messages from people saying they've seen the Gulfport cars going around. So I'm sure I'll start getting them from y'all as well. So thank you so much. And we're going to do the Lighthouse also. So. We're doing the Lighthouse on Friday, so I hope you guys can all come out there. I think I'm going to show up around 6, and I needed to talk to the police about that, too, to see if we can get maybe somebody there to help us just kind of cross the street like we did last year. 
So, but thank you guys so much. It's growing. We've got, I think we had three cities last year that did proclamations, and this year I think we have eight or nine. So it's making a difference in these kids' families, and we really appreciate everything you guys do. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. And that concludes my report. Outstanding, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll move to council reports since there are no departmental reports. Mr. Gines in Ward 2. All right. Um, let's see. Mike Leonard, I just want to catch, catch up with you about that water bill situation that we had after, after the uh, meeting. And that's all. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Gines. Miss Ha Mrs. Hawthorne in Ward 3. Can we get a quick update on the Broadwater property? Uh, the Broadwater property, we're talking about the uh, clearing and cleanup of your wife. Let me take that one. Irish Street, yeah. Councilwoman, uh, as of a week ago, the property owners, Roy Anderson and uh, Cotton Four, uh, started uh, cleaning out the camps. Their work is not visible from the street because they're starting down in the center of all that area. <clears throat> little bit by little bit, picking up trash, picking up old belongings, and hauling them away, and then cutting down all the little brush, and so that we'll be able to nothing but large trees in there. And I'm, I, I would, I, I just before we went on, I asked them for an update. I maybe we'll get it before the meeting's over. Whatever it is, I'll pass it along to you okay. as okay. to how far, how much, how much, how much longer they're going to need. This is really in, they're working in the area between. Baker Street and, 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 and Iris, mm -hmm. and between uh, the railroad track and, and the back of the buildings on, uh, on uh, Pass Road. Not all the way to Pass Road, though. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the update. We Appreciate may have somebody in citizens' comments that can give us some pictures, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Hawthorne? Okay. Mr. McGilvery in Ward 4. I just had one thing. I'd like to thank the administration and uh, Park and Recreation for the uh, Sports Hall of Fame program ceremony that was um, I attended uh, along with Councilman Gines, Councilman Tisdale uh, this past Sunday. It was very well put together. It was uh, very well attended and everything was outstanding and uh, it was a fantastic ceremony. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Glavin in Ward 6. <clears throat> yeah, a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> I own some uh, property on Crawford Street, my, my grandfather's uh, property, but uh, there were some residents that were uh, concerned about the new paving that's going down. It's creating, up into their driveways, it's creating an uneven situation. Could somebody just investigate that, just check it out? Well, as far as uh, St. Michael's, as far as correction of some of the driveway and, and the, those uh, transitions, I think uh, we talked about it. The last meeting with Nick Ace, and they're in a the final mode of, of punch list and finishing. Yes, sir, Councilman. You mean uh, Crawford, south of the railroad tracks, yes. under the yes, Nick Ace projects? Yeah, we're supposed to have our final two inches of asphalt placed beginning the week of September 9th. Is what the schedule is. So hopefully that'll correct some of it. Was there a specific address on Crawford or just uh, general? I'd have to get it. Um, I think he lives a little bit uh, a little bit further than Midway. Okay. On that, but I, if if you need his address, I can get it. He he just called me today. I bumped into him a, a few times when I've been out at the Crawford Street property, and he just asked me if I would, I would uh, kind of look into it. Yes, sir. If you give me that address, we'll make sure that there's not a issue with the elevation. But we are supposed to get our final layer of asphalt tentatively scheduled beginning the week of September 9th in that whole area. As much as we can, there's some transition or some things towards Lacoon Street and, and uh, that parallel road uh, between Crawford Street and Rose, Rosetti Street that uh, has some, some subsurface stuff to do. Well, we're going through and making sure that before we put surface down that uh, all the services are in, make sure the contractor didn't miss a sewer or water service, uh, checking the videos, trying to make sure all that prior to putting the final coat on. But if you send me the address, we'll check into the elevations, make sure there's no other lingering issues we're unaware of. All right. Thank you for that. Yes, That's sir. all I got. Thank you, Mr. Glavin. Um, Mr. Shoemaker in Ward 7. And just a few things. Uh, ditches. I know I can 
bring up ditches and grass frequently, but I've had an influx of ditches recently, some complaints, and some of the people that I've talked to, and of course I don't know, I haven't checked on it. Uh, I had one actually on my way here today, another one, but said that there's some ditches that haven't been uh, taken care of in a couple of years that were reported back when Nathan Barrett was here. And like I said, I hadn't checked on that, but there is an influx of, of complaints recently about ditches. Grass, you know, the city's been out there, kudos to them, they've been out there cutting. I saw some last week, they, they got a good bit cut. Still a good bit, unfortunately, left to cut. And weed eating, again, I know I'm hard on grass cutting, but they've been cutting some grass, but I don't know that anything's been weed eated. And uh, so I know they're busy and I know it's raining, but other than um, one other thing, uh, let's see, restaurant. We have a new restaurant open in Ward 7. Flatheads and Bottom Feeders, it's uh, a new business. They just built a brand new building right there on Wool Market Road behind the Chevron at the four way. And uh, it's, I've been there, the food's good, but they're open, I think seven days a week. And uh, so just wanted to shout out to them, new business in the city and in Ward 7. And that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shoemaker. Um, three things, um, Councilman McGilvery mentioned the uh, City Sports Hall of Fame. It was very nicely done. If you ever have friends or relatives inducted, you should, you should make that ceremony, that event every year. There's always a ton of people and a lot of folks you've not seen in a, in a few decades. Bless you, Ms. Hawthorne. The uh, second thing is with the Broadwater property is adjacent to the old Beauvoir Elementary School property. And just to the east of the school property, there's a, the city used to use it as a, yeah, Hollis Field. I couldn't remember the name of it. And there's, uh, who owns that property? And checking with the school district, they say it's not theirs. I, is it ours? You, the last uh, document I have, Peter, the last document I have shows it was a resolution approving our temporary use of it during the hurricane for collect, collecting debris. And I gather from reading that, that if we're asking them for, for permission to use temporarily their site, that they still own this. Right, I, that's to the best of my recollection as well, that it's school property, that there was an interlocal agreement or two that permitted uh, the city to use that Hollis well, Field for I baseball. will promise you this, um, Mayor and uh, Council, we'll reach out to the school district this week and, and coordinate on some activities to get uh, homeless issues on that property taken care of. Right, and there are a few, there are a couple of dugouts that are still covered, yep. so that's, okay. Well, when so, we had that problem you. at Mercy Cross, we demoed the uh, dugouts. I don't know why we can't do the same thing if the, if the school district allows us to. Yeah, that works for me. Peter on that. Works for me, and it's also so overgrown. So some, whoever owns a property needs to clear it, basically. It, it, it is a school district, but I mean, even before the Broadwater situation arose, we were having conversation with the district and they asked if we had any temporary or more immediate use for it. Uh, they were offering it to us as late as, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So I think we may do an MOU. Okay. Uh, sort of at least to, to have a base for our future operations there. Right, just to clarify who does what, thank you. Uh, also, I. Uh, like to schedule another budget workshop next Tuesday of September 3rd. It's an evening meeting at six o'clock. And I would suggest if everybody on the council is good with four o'clock. And I would hope that we can, right now we're just going through the departmental budgets, listening to non-departmental requests, kicking some things around and having questions answered, but we really need to start making some decisions. And I'm hoping we can do that beginning at that meeting next Tuesday at four o'clock. I believe also that night, that night is the public hearing that is required before we pass the budget. Uh, it's just a public hearing to, right. to make comments. Okay. So. And the, so the advertising's run, so Kara, if you'll make a note of that, that we've got a public hearing on the budget, uh, which is always interesting. We invite the public to come to that meeting and make comments. Usually we're hugely disappointed because there'll be just a couple of people there 
that may or may not speak, but you can comment on the budget. All right, thank you. That concludes my comments. We'll move on to the public agenda and citizens' comments. We'll set aside up to 45 minutes for any uh, comments that people may want to make to the council or the city administration. We allot each person up to three minutes. And uh, when your three minutes are up, what would they hear, Carrie? You hear the bell. So when your three minutes are up, you hear the bell and that's it. It's not a question and answer period, but it is an opportunity to comment uh, on whatever, whatever's on your mind, as long as it's not some sort of personal attack uh, here on the council. That being said, is there anybody on my right, your left, who wishes to address the council? Nobody on my right, your left. Anybody on my left, your right, wish to address the council? Yes. Yes, ma'am. You have somebody behind you, Bob. Ladies first. Thank you. And just, and if you've not signed in, please do that and then state your name so the clerk can record it and just be sure the mic looks to be on so you're good to go. Okay. I've signed in already. Thank you. Uh, Amanda Kroos with Elliott Holmes. I uh, just wanted to say that for item 4B under the policy agenda, I'm here to answer any questions about Monarch Villas um, and explain the project if there's any questions. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. Is there anybody else on my left, your right? Mr. Silvestro? You still signing? I guess. Can you get a new name plate, sir? All right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I just wanted to, everyone knows we've been working by our house to fix things, and I just wanted to let everyone know how thankful the neighbors are. We know it's a mission. I found out how hard it is to get things done in politics and even to get your cable fixed. but. It's, it's, it's an issue in this country, and it's an issue everywhere. And, you know, I appreciate everything everybody's done, and I know people that are wealthy that own land are wealthy for a reason, and they spend their money wisely. Just two questions I had as we started to move forward. It has really stirred up the people who are in the woods, and they are out in full force, which there's so much help in this city for people, but I was just wondering, you know, some of the neighbors are concerned about now that things have moved forward. We've got 35 people to join our neighborhood crime watch. I personally joined the Citizens Academy, which is pretty cool. You get to meet the policemen. So the neighbors are concerned there's going to be retaliation if that job is not completed. So we're just letting you know. And last night, just north of the railroad tracks and just west of iris there was a pretty big fire and we have video and yes, it was toxic there was smoke coming i don't know what it was and it was there for like an hour in that field and one of the older ladies you know they're on oxygen but if we could just maybe there was some way that i guess they've decided to make me the mayor of uh, whatever but <laughs> i can't answer people's questions that i don't know i know the firemen were there and they did a great job but some of the people are asking like what could have been burning so anyway, I'm here to volunteer help to do whatever I can, but I, I ain't going in that woods and I ain't fighting fires. Thank you all for your help. Thank you, Mr. Silvestro. Anybody else on my left, your right? My left, your right. Last chance to speak if you wish to speak. Okay, that concludes citizens' comments. We'll now move to the policy agenda. If the clerk would read item A, which was moved by Mr. Glavin with a second by Mr. Tisdale. Ordinance to amend the code of ordinances pertaining to garbage collection and disposal fees. Uh, Mr. Glavin, any comments? Yeah, can we get the uh, generalization of what the increase is gonna be and? Is it not in the uh, resolution? I'm, I'm asking you. I've got it. it. I'm, to you. I'm, you want me to, I'm happy to read it, Kenny. As was run in the newspaper from and after October the 1st, 2024, beginning of the new fiscal year. The rate will be $24.25 per dwelling per month. 24. Uh, uh, what increase is that? Uh, 
What was it? Wait, I know I hear what was it. It's not in the resolution. Hmm. I think it, it, it was 2375 and now it's 2425. So, yeah. Is that so? I think that's know, 50 cents, I believe, a month. I know we've been subsidizing it uh, a little bit. Does that bring it where we can break even? Or are we close to that level? I think we're passing on just what, what, it, what experience or what CPI increase has been passed on to us. So. Right. And I think a couple of years ago we talked about that. That was uh, in the water rates, not so much in, in the solid waste. Oh, culture. not in the solid waste. Okay. And, and we're underwater on that and we're trying to make it where to break even. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're breaking even. Water sewer. We're the, breaking the, even. We're, we're breaking even. I mean, we're, we're breaking even. Okay. But and that's the whole goal. In this particular matter, it's you know CPI adjusted every year as, as the utility authority negotiates with the whoever has the. Okay, and we're in line with them yeah. exactly. Okay. Mr. Glad, Nick, I'm sorry. Okay. No, you, we Thank haven't. You, we, uh, haven't we hadn't uplifted that number, if you know what I mean, to to have five percent on top of what the CPI adjusted. So we just maybe okay. one or two cents off of what it really has increased in cost. Else. Peter, that admin administrative fees in there. Yeah. yeah. What, it's, what is that, 25 cents, something like that? 18 cents. 18 cents. Yeah. There's an administrative fee other than the pass through from the cost that we have to pay HCUA. There's a, what'd you say, 18, 18 cent administrative fee that we tack on. We just roll it up. That comes nowhere c close to c uh, paying, paying us for collecting you know, trash from people who aren't paying their bill. Right. For starters, we've got still near 100 people who don't pay for their trash and we're chasing all the time. Right. Okay. Our, our contract with, um, w w when does that expire? I think we, we got two more years on that. Two more, two more years left. Has there been any discussion at all, Mayor, on twice a week pickup? Has that entered the equation yet? That would be something at the, the end conversations of the Conversations we had at the utility authorities, uh, the, but you know, for the majority of the folks and, and the cost of, of that uh, versus the number of people who need two times, I think it's uh, $2 a month for a second can, which would put those folks who need additional, uh, you know, get a different colored can too, that's, you might see that. So I think the, the, the uh, consensus was to address the, the people who need more than you know, the one day with the one can pickup to get a second can. And my last comment is this, if a resident, I've had a few ask, if their trash can is beat up. It should be replaced. Right. They, they can call for a request to, right. to get it replaced. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, and we're contractually obligated to increase the cost since we deal with the Harrison County Utility Authority and have for a number of years, just like all the other cities in Harrison County, except for Gulfport. So that being the case. And their rate is over $35 a month. I'm going to tell them you said that. <laughs> okay, no, I, I recall they decided to go at loan and they pay a little more for that, Mayor. Yeah, and, but, and that cost is in, not the water and sewer fund, but is in the general fund. That cost we're talking about, the rate that we have, that's actually part of the general fund revenue as well as. Right, I think it's under public works and we budget about $4 million for that or something, give or, or have this past year, whatever it is. It's about 14,000 times, you know, that number. A lot, yep. big number. Um, but I just wanted to point that out, as, and Mr. Glavin said, we still have a couple of years under this current contract mm -hmm. and then it'll be rebid and hopefully we get a better rate, but it seems like it's never a lower rate. But uh, I think it's still a good deal, personally, for what you pay to have, what, up to four yards of trash or waste or garbage removed from your property every week. I think the challenge is, is in the solid waste, you know, uh, the facilities where they're bringing all this, you know, all this, right. uh, this stuff to. And I think there's some, uh, allow waste managers to expand, not the, big, the footprint, but to expand deeper uh, uh, that, that, uh, that facility they have, which would put us in a better position than having to go build. You know, that conversation is taking place by building our own right. uh, dump. So I think that's, that, you know, that's in motion at the time you know, to uh, uh, weigh, it's in the utility authority kind of uh, interactions to figure out, uh, I don't think there's any opposition to expanding the facility they already have. 
Right. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Any other comments or questions? Anybody? Last call. All right. We'll call for the question. All in favor? The the ordinance is presented. It's six zero vote for the clerk. Thank you. All right, that brings us to item B. If the clerk would read item B, please. Ordinance to grant the establishment of a PDC plan development commercial district master plan coupled with a preliminary subdivision for 955 Motsi Road. All right, this was, uh, the motion was made by Mr. Glavin during the first reading and a second by Mrs. Hawthorne. Mr. Glavin. Yes, I have a couple questions if you don't mind coming up to How are you doing today? Okay, good. All right, so as I understand it, this is a 25 unit uh, development. Um, does it uh, entail three different designs or three different uh, kind of concepts under one floor plan? It's one floor plan, but three different elevations. They're all two story, three bedroom, one and a half bath units. Okay, and are there any common areas that are used by the facility or is it just all uh, individual units? In this particular property, it's just basically the 25 units. It's 1.5 acres. So okay. unlike our, the project y'all seen last week, Coral Breeze, where we're able to provide a, like a pickleball court, we didn't have the room to, to do so on this, on this piece of property. So we have 25 units and we have the detention area, entrance signage, and then mail kiosk. Okay, and I noticed the sign, uh, you got a sign out there that you're marketing them. It looked like it's starting in the 200s, 200,000 range. Is that accurate? They're starting at 220,000. Okay. All right. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, just basically, uh, we're just asking for the plan development commercial district um, it, for the reason that if we were to be able to sell these units, um, we wouldn't, didn't want to do a condo plot per se over this because it's being built and permitted for a multifamily use right now. Um, the only options we would have had to do is do a condo plot, but that inhibits our buyers. Like it, it's harder for them to get financing. It's harder for them to get loans for a condo. So it'd be easier if we can do, if we'd offer a fee simple um, where they would own the property. Um, one change I did want to note, um, when we submitted the application and went through planning commission, there was a layout um, that had about 900 and, about 900 and, let's see, the smallest unit size was 759 square foot and the largest is 954. But going through the previous one, which this property is pretty similar to Coral Breeze that y'all seen last week, um, some of the comments from the council was to add more of a backyard for these homeowners. So we supplemented the application where we extended each property line back to the overall property boundary to increase the yard size per unit. So if that is acceptable, that would make the smallest lot size 1,057 square feet and the largest 1,577 square feet. Um, so we thought that would work better for the community and for the residents. Um, we provide uh, 40 parking places, two of them are ADA parking places, uh, there's a mail kiosk I mentioned already, dumpsters, five foot sidewalks, um, let's see, um, and then of course the project like I said, has already started, we're already building out there because it started off as multi-family. Um, let's see, I think that was pretty much everything. Um, just basically wanted to point out the difference in the site plans to make sure that you understood that. I got one last question. So any of the common areas that you mentioned with the sidewalks or the road or any lighting, is that gonna be part of, for lack of a better word, an HOA or, or some kind of fee structured Yes, sir. Thank you. I forgot that part. No, that's okay. We, um, we will establish an HOA, which will maintain all of those areas. The water and sewer in the parking lot is all private. It will not be maintained by the city. Um, the HOA is established to go ahead and pay all the water and sewer bills um, once, we, once we get the approval to start the HOA. But we've already spoke to the HOA management company. They're on board to begin as soon as we give them the green light to go ahead. Um, this makes it easier for our residents. No resident... Um, 
it will be known to the buyers if they buy the property. If they don't put a fence up and they would like to have their backyards maintained by the grass cutting company, then they, we can go ahead and do that as well. Um, so it's just kind of just a, a better like selling point for the, for the owners of each unit. Okay. No other questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Hawthorne. Nothing. Nothing. Any other questions or comments? My only comment is this is very similar. Sorry, Amanda, you you attended the last meeting, I think, and it has nothing to do with you. It's just the the idea that these were originally going to be, I believe, townhomes and then for rental. There were both villas for rental. Villas. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. For rentals, and then I think uh, in in the uh, narrative on the record, I think with the planning commission, the market changed. Right, and we had more buyers coming to us asking to be able to buy the units instead of rental, which we thought would be a win-win for the city um, to have more permanent residents than rather rentals, and they just keep the area nicer anyway, most of the time. Uh, and I understand that there, there are housing needs here in the city. There are also apartment needs, multifamily apartment needs, uh, and I, I didn't support Carl Breeze last week. I can't support this. Um, this project, and as, as Mr. Glavin mentioned, and you noted that uh, the HOA will maintain these common areas, and will there be, I think there's going to be a single water main? Yes, there is. So a single meter, so the HOA, uh, again, would pay, pay that water bill. Um, and short term, and Mr. Creel, you can just a shake of the head, short term rentals are permitted. E either way, whether whether uh, before the right before this change or after this change, it were still permitted based on the zoning. All right, we'll call for the question. All in favor of the ordinance is presented. All in opposition. It's a five-one vote. Tisdale in opposition. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Gross. All right, that brings us to item C under resolutions that the clerk would read item C, please. Resolution granting conditional use approval to authorize an indoor entertainment recreational use for 2649 Pash Road. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second by Mrs. Hawthorne. Um, Ms. Hawthorne, any comments or questions you might have? Thank you. Now, everybody is excited, and one day I'm going to go over and take pictures of the interior. Uh, I would urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this. I suspect you already are. This is in the old Hobby Lobby in the, is it, I believe it's referred to as Edgewater Square. Yes, sir. Um, kind of a strip mall place, so we're glad to see something go in there. <clears throat> and although Mr. Lawrence is not here today, <laughs> I'm sure if he's listening or watching, he's hopping around in joy now that we have more, we will have more pickleballs uh, courts uh, on the way here to Biloxi. All right, there being no further questions, all in favor of the resolution is presented. It's a 6 0 vote for the clerk, thank you. That brings us to the next item, if the clerk would read item D. Resolution granting minor subdivision final plat for 517 Howard Avenue. So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Gines. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Glavin. Mr. Gines. Yeah, um, this is uh, Mr. Marvin Hendricks. He's done a great job down there on Howard Avenue. Uh, been a cornerstone of refurbishing that area. Um, and I encourage all my colleagues to support this. Okay, Mr. Glavin. I have nothing to add. Any discussion or questions? Mr. Creel, I have, a, I have a question. And the next item is related to it. It's a, a lot adjacent, again, another minor subdivision, final plant. But this is a, the old Barks root beer by, uh, plant there on Keller. Behind it, yes, sir. But just to the south of that, there is, I went and took pictures and looked, and there's really no, <clears throat> there's no paved road. Mm -hmm. So is, is this a, a are easements required in order to access these properties, these two? Well, the, if you'll uh, look at the map, what it shows is that that road that ran beside the old Bark building yeah. that uh, comes east off of Keller went back and came actually behind 
the first lot that's being subdivided and then right. ended uh, with access to get in there. Now, what happened is, is that when that section of right of way was vacated, half of that property or 10 feet of that width going back there went to Mr. Hendricks. So he has a 10 foot access drive that gets to the first lot and then ends going into the second lot, the one to the east of that. So he does have access to get in there to both of the, the ordinance says you have to front on a street right of way or have access to a street right of way. So when that was vacated, what, what road was that? That wasn't Comfort Place, was it? Wasn't that Keller? I'm trying, it was off, it, it's, it's, it's a road that runs on, it, it, west of that, I can't remember. It the kind name of aligns with Comfort Place, but I don't believe that it actually had the name of Comfort. ever had an A. Peter, do you have anything to add to that? No. I just want to be sure you were paying attention. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Creel. Okay. So, so uh, who, who, whoever, whatever's placed on these lots, they have. There's a, a ten foot. Ab, not. A, I don't want to say avenue, but there's. 10 feet of something that can be put feet down. Of driveway, we could call of it. Driveway, all right. 10 feet of probably. driveway to access both of those. All right, thank right. you. Are there any other questions? There being none, all in favor of the resolution is presented. It's approved on a 6 0 vote for the clerk. That brings us to the companion piece, item E. If the clerk would read that, please. Resolution granting minor subdivision final plat for 515 Howard Avenue. So moved. Motion second. by Mr. Gines, a second by Mr. Glavin. Any questions or comments, Mr. Gines? Same thing, uh, and Mr. Creel explained it well. I think uh, myself and Mr. Hendricks, we walked walk the area and all those things uh, was addressed when we walked that walked the property. Okay. Mr. Glavin, anything? I have nothing to add. All right, any other comments or questions from the council? There being none, all in favor of the resolution is presented. It's approved on a 6-0 vote, thank you. This brings us to the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Gines, a second by Mr. Glavin. Uh, Mr. Gines, you're first out of the blocks today. I have nothing to talk about. Yeah, okay. Everything's good. All right, Ms. Mrs. Hawthorne, Mr. McGilbrey. Item number C, the um, the vacuum truck. This is a used vacuum vacuum truck. It is a used truck, and we can, it'll be about half the price of a new one, and is available. It is it, it, it's been repurposed, as the mayor says, and um, the manufacturer that uh, in Gulfport has promised us he could get it delivered before the end of the fiscal year. Hmm. There'll be a warranty with it of some kind, I would think. Uh, Money's in the public works bu budget. Is there a warranty on the when you but there's, Will there be a warranty I'll, on the vehicle? I'll find out, sir. Oh, okay. That's all I have, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Glavin, anything? I have nothing. Mr. Shoemaker, anything? All right. Uh, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Oh, excuse me. This is a consent agenda. Getting excited here. Just a consent agenda. Any other items, Mr. McGilvery? I was on a roll there for a moment. I had a question on, on item P. Professional service agreement for Mr. Gerald Batano. Batallo. Batallo. Batallo, Dr. I'm Batallo, sorry. Dr. Batallo works in support of the engineering department and he attends all the DRC hearings. That's just his main function in life to, re to go to the DRC, review the documents at the DRC, make comments, and report back to the pu to Public Works. It's a you know DRC is a once a week event. stays pretty stays pretty busy. They push a lot of development through there. He's a PhD PE by the way. Anything else, Mr. McGilvery? No, sir. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Glavin, anything? No, I have nothing. Mr. Shoemaker, anything? Yeah, just a question. Just curious, On is he a, he's not a city employee, he's contract? Correct. Is that correct? And just out of curiosity, is that something that a normal, one of our normal engineering employees could do? If, if they had the time. 
I'm sorry. Christy. Ms. Labata, welcome. I got my pronoun today. Um, thank you. Uh, yes, it, it is something that we could do in-house if, um, if his contract wasn't renewed. We could absorb that function. Okay. And pardon my ignorance on this, but if, and I know he's, you said, uh, Mr. Leonard, that he's going to and he's attending the um, DRC. DRC meetings on Wednesday. Is there anything specific any kind of certifications or licenses or anything you have to have to attend those or no let, let me add to to this situation is that Gerald you know has a wealth of knowledge you know like Billy Ray on what has been designed he's been around a long time and so the value of not so much what has to be done but what has you know been accomplished and those kinds of things there's a lot of value and expertise he's had since uh, since he's been around Biloxi That's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Director. Thank you, Ms. Labata. Anything else, Mr. Shoemaker? No, that's all. Thank okay. You. On uh, item F, it deals with the Greater Biloxi Economic Development Foundation and uh, looks like we're allocating $10,000 uh, for them. Is, is And this is for this next fiscal year? No, that, that was in the, that's in the current budget. Okay. It's just uh, so they were asking question. for a draw on their Okay, budget. I got you. All right. Um, Mr. Abon, if you would, just a brief summary of what their, res what their responsibility is for the city, just for the benefit of those listening and council members. Uh, this is sort of a, it's more business leaders and community leaders in Biloxi that are focused on things to assist downtown Biloxi sort of like Main Street, but a little more business oriented. Uh, they were the administrator for the uh, uh, BP Restore Act grant that the uh, Parks Building got. They've uh, uh, helped with some of the mural projects. They're helping with the sign on Bayview using their funds. Uh, also at the Food Giant, if you can recall what that looked like about a year ago with weeds and the curbs all peeling and they sort of got with the owner and uh, got that sort of spruced up, cleaned up, repainted. Okay. Things that we'd like to have done, but they can do it without us having to, um, to they, go through all the complicated parts of it. Are they looking to make a non-departmental non -departmental request? for this next year, next fiscal year, do you know? In the non-department uh, budget I, right I now? I don't know. I, I guess they probably would want whatever they have from last year, but I haven't. Okay, I just can't recall if it was in the non-departmentals when we discussed that a couple of weeks ago, is it? I would the guess fiscal year probably the 10,000 may be okay. in there. All right. Um, on the item W, I just want to make a comment there. We're closing capital project 1092 which is the point redevelopment program. That project was created in fiscal year 22. And uh, by closing the project, because we had allocated, I think, $400,000 for that, so we'll actually save $186,000. We give you a little uh, review. When we were looking at the expansion of Pine Street and across Howard Avenue to uh, Margaritaville, and the ability to tie in Howard Avenue with some expansion and, and elevation and possibly uh, the exit from the Bluxy Ocean Springs Bridge. That was the area we tried to get some engineering. Uh, and, and again, as, as uh, those possibilities, you know, with, uh, that could have re resulted in expansion of Margaritaville and, and uh, some of the things that would happen on the Fifth Street Margaritaville. That's, uh, and it included a big part of that was, you know, the engineering of the uh, tying of uh, Pine Street into Fifth Street, so but there's no uh, you know no opportunity to do that, so we figured we can right. move some things around. So money was allocated, four hundred thousand was allocated budget was al for that. Budget was allocated. That's right. Okay. I think we so, spent thirty-one thousand or something like that. Yeah, thirty thirty-four something. or something. But um, the uh, it, it, really the point I want to make is, you know, that additional uh, two percent. When you said it would take uh, 
take about 400,000 to go that additional 2%. Well, that, that's, there's like almost half of that 400,000 right there. Just want to point that out. Thank Good. you, man. Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you. I want to take, want to take note. Um, any other questions or comments? Finally, all right. All in favor of the consent agenda? All right, if I have an exception, I we'll, we'll get to you in just a moment. Okay, so that's approved on a 6-0 vote. We'll start with exceptions. Mr. Gines, any exceptions? None. Ms. Hawthorne? Mr. McGilvery? P. So Mr. McGilvery's in opposition on P. I'm in opposition on item P. Mr. Glavin? I have none. Have none. Mr. Shoemaker? Item P as well. Item P. So we have three in opposition. Mr. Shoemaker, Tisdale, and Mr. McGilvery. Um, which, yeah, so it's so it's it's not approved. Okay. All right. I think that's all we have for the consent agenda. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. So when it uh, an item on the consent is not approved and we have a full board, would it be brought up for reconsideration from one of the dissenting? I, I, I would like to move to. Um, uh, and I don't know if, if I'm in order to uh, table that until we have a full uh, count, a full uh, crew. So if we can table item P. 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 Mr. Creel, yes. comment. Okay, as a, because DRC falls under our department, um, you know, I, normally I wouldn't speak on something like this, but because it falls under our department, the problem we have is that we've got to have somebody from every department that actually shows up at the DRC meetings. Dr. Batallo does show up. Uh, anytime that a member doesn't show up, that just pushes the projects back a week for that person, whether, you know, whether it's engineering or whether it's public works or wherever, to uh, we're making that developer wait another week for that person to do it. So, uh, you know, whether you all approve Dr. Patalo or not, we just, we have to have somebody from every department actually show up on Wednesday to review those projects that we have. And that's all I got to say. Okay. Uh, I'm, ass I'm assuming, Mr. Abide, correct me if I'm wrong, we could, uh, in the future, we could reconsider this matter? Right. Uh, correct. And since there was no prevailing side. Uh, well, we hadn't totally finished, so um, I think that it, um, I have a mo motion put on the table where I move to table it until we have a full council. And uh, as a member, well, as a former member of the planning commission, I know all the ties of uh, and the problems that that could that could uh, cause. So that's why I uh, moved it. So it's on the table. Right. Well, we had already we had already voted on the consent agenda. Okay. okay, and and it can be reconsidered at a future meeting. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Abide. And if Mr. Glavin wants, you know, if we want to wait till Mr. Lawrence is back, it may be a meeting or two. But we can always bring it up for reconsideration at that time. Would that be accurate, Mr. Abide? Yeah, I mean, the contract itself is is terminable at will for convenience at any time, anyway. So. Um, I do take your point that I think the council did vote on the uh, the consent agenda with exceptions unless there was a motion to reinstate it or open it back up. I think that could be done. I'd have to check with my expert over there, but um, I think it could go either way. My question is this, uh, as we talked about the consent agenda, that item definitely came up, but I mean, I, I had no inkling that, uh, you know, it would be rejected. Um, people make exceptions all the time, but usually we make, we can vote on it independently or have some more debate. Uh, you know, I don't have any reason, I didn't hear any reason, we had no sp debate between us of any reason why we were voting against it or for it. And that, that gives me a little bit of a, you know, pause on did we give it the right credence, um, whether it, it just is, is now in limbo. And Councilman Glavin, and I'll, I, I also disagree with Dr. Tisdale because 
we hadn't totally closed that out. I hear what you're saying, but I don't believe that we actually closed it totally out. Uh, we're, we're, we're grouping a whole bunch of things together. And if there's an opportunity before we actually close it out and, and um, uh, put our stamp on it, I believe that we were still within that window. Mr. Abai, given what you said that we, we, this issue could go either way, even though we voted on the consent agenda, I'm willing to go back for, to reconsider at this time for, uh, to pull this item out of the consent agenda. Is there, is there a, if a motion is made and seconded, and if that's a, if that's a we can do that. four to two vote at least, <laughs> right? Then, then I think uh, then a motion could be made to table it. All right. You want to make that motion, Mr. Mo Levin? Motion to reconsider. Is that how we would do this? Motion to reconsider item P on the consent agenda. On yes. the consent agenda. I second it, even though my motion was uh, ignored. All right. Did the clerk get that? All of that. I know you have to write quickly and listen at the same time. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. So there's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I, I think what we're trying to do is just pull uh, item P off and to talk about it amongst ourselves and, and then come to a final rational decision. Okay. All, 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 in, all in favor of pulling this off the agenda for more discussion. I'll go, I'll go with it. All right, that's a 6 0 vote. Fire, Mr. Glavin, you're up first. Well, you know, I'm certainly for it. I recognize, as my colleague, uh, Mr. Gines, uh, had elaborated, that, you know, we need representation uh, at these meetings. And uh, as Director Creel uh, kind of reported to us, he does show up and he does fulfill that responsibility uh, to examine uh, some key areas that, that need, you know, his uh, professional uh, care. And um, so I'm, I'm interested, you know, in, during this discussion, if, the, if there's other uh, ideas or opinions, I'm certainly open to hear those on, on why I should uh, either vote for this or, or, or put an exception in myself. Thank you, Mr. Glavin. Mr. Gaines? Um, I don't have anything else to add to it. I think um, we should, uh, I'm going to move to table it. I think we should just go ahead and uh, table this until um, George come in. That's it. Okay. Any, any other discussion or comments? I would uh, just say. Mr. Mr. Shoemaker. Thank you. And I guess the reason I had an exception to it, I'm just not certain we're paying $100 per hour for someone that can, that's already, work. if we have employees that can already do the job, why are we paying an additional $100 an hour to a contractor to step in and do the job that an employee that's current, currently working here can do, apparently, from what the director said, that someone else can do. And I understand somebody, I do understand that, Director Creel. Somebody has to be there, but I'm thinking, I would hope, if it's a current employee who's working a shift, that someone would show up at their business hours during the week. So hopefully that wouldn't or shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yeah, you had a comment? Uh, uh, I understand and appreciate, you know, uh, just from, at a glance. Um, maybe it's the best thing to have y'all come up here and ask those questions regarding the, you know, the burden rate or the, the timeliness of, of doing in-house versus, you know, the expertise he's at the table, PhD, in, you know, in, in engineering, and that has a wealth of knowledge that, you know, just because somebody gives you a hammer don't mean you're a carpenter. And I think Gerald can express some of the conditions that he's seen as part of his history in engineering in Biloxi uh, that may add some value to the, uh, you know, to the burden rate and, 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 and maybe not have that expertise in the pool of engineers we have. So, I mean, that, that's where the, the economies of, of uh, having, you know, the horsepower and, and you know, the, the experience uh, would, you know, make economic sense. I think that would be the good thing to have Gerald come up in and answer, you know, uh, provide hey, the information he's had. 
what kind of engineering? Declare it's not a full time job. Yeah. Right. What kind of engineering degree? Uh, mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineer. Yeah. Oh, civil, civil, it's civil engineer too, isn't it? So civil and mechanical. Yeah. I think C Georgia Tech and his PhD was from. Yeah. Yeah, and worked for the uh, Orleans Water and Sewer Bar Board for a bunch of years too. Right, so. but is he's an aerospace engineer? He was one of the civil engineers on the construction of the Coliseum when it was built at SFU. Okay, and and again, part of his last uh, employment was with, with the Orleans Water and Sewer Board. So I mean, you know, he knows what's under the under the ground in a lot of ways. So I mean, you know, if you talk to him. Uh, and you can assess the you know the value of, of what he brings to the table, um, <clears throat> and you can just shake your head, Miss Labata. You don't have to walk all the way up here. Uh, how many engineers, including yourself, are in the engineering department? Three of you, okay. And I recall when we had when Miss Labata in a in a previous run with the city was. Uh, the head engineer and left and was gone. I think Mr. Leonard did a good job covering for her in the engineering department. At that time, we contracted with two engineers. One was uh, Dr. Patalo and the other was uh, Milady. I can't remember right. And then uh, in, in the interim, Mrs. Labata was somewhere else. Then she returned and I think Miss Milady was here for a few months and then left, and Mr. Patalo is still here. And if I go to DRC meetings occasionally, uh, but I would imagine with four engineers, I would assume that's what you had when you were employed with the city the first time and left. So, I mean, you managed to have an engineer at all the DRC meetings then, as far as I know, unless folks were ill or whatever. I don't want to put you on the spot. I don't mean to do that. It's just I think we have enough. What's I don't know that anything has changed, and I and I know the man, and he's a nice guy. Don't have a problem with with him as a person. I just don't think we need a part time engineer that we're paying a hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> okay, that's all. And and this came up. I mean, we contract ten hours a month or twenty hours a month. What is this for? Twenty hours a month. He's he's paid. If you look at the docket, this this twenty this, hours a week. Okay. This month's about four thousand dollars a month, and and in the past sometimes it's been eight or nine thousand dollars a month. That was a while back, so it, it fluctuates. But lately, it's been about four or five thousand dollars a month. And just for the record, this came up last year. I voted in opposition last year. So, and I hate that we had to discuss all this publicly, but uh, that's that's where we are. I got a, I got a comment. Go I, I don't have any problem, uh, you know, asking tough questions or doing this publicly. I, I'd like uh, to ask our director uh, some questions. Sure. So, so we're here. Uh, debating uh, this issue about uh, an engineer with a wealth of experience that uh, attends all of the meetings, that fulfills a, a role that is necessary uh, to function at the Planning Commission. So I guess the question is, if I'm understanding my colleague correctly, do we have enough engineers to fill that role uh, without compromising uh, any other responsibilities they have on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes. I have, have enough engineers to fill that role. I just recently hired a construction manager that is gonna take on some of the work that the engineers um, have been doing and some additional work for some new projects we have coming up. So I, I think I have capacity. I know I have capacity to take on sending an engineer in-house to DRC if that's what the council chooses. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. Any other, quest Any other questions or comments from the council? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think I'm still, Mr. Gunn. I'm still asked to move. I'm still moving the table. All right. So, Ms. Mr. Gaines has a motion to table until we act for capacity. This matter. Is there a second? Is a second by Ms. Newman. Excuse me. It's doing so well, Mrs. Hawthorne. Any discussion? None. 
We didn't we didn't beat that dead horse as the horses. All in all in favor of tabling the motion, excuse me, tabling the matter. All in opposition. Again, it's a three three vote. The motion fails. That brings us back to where we started. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, uh, we'll move on. It, it's the been reconsidered. Reconsider. Do we need to vote on it again for the exceptions? The motion to reconsider, I don't think there's been a vote on that. All right. Well, uh, there's been a motion. I think it was by Mr. Glavin, second by Mr. Gines now to reconsider the motion. All in favor of the motion is presented. The motion to reconsider. Okay. Uh, all in opposition. We'll do it again just to make it clean. All in opposition. Voted yeah. The reconsideration. We did earlier. Three three. Then we then we moved to bring it out. Yeah. So three three. Yeah, it was way a it six zero to reconsider. Just for the record. Right. <clears throat> and then. Uh, so do we need to vote on the exceptions after we've reconsidered and well, debated we, it again? I think that was the vote on the. That was the reconsideration vote, as I took it. Another three to three. That's, that's so the reconsideration was six zero. And it, initially, we reconsidered it because Mr. Mr. Glavin and Mr. Gines wanted it reconsidered. We did reconsider it. There was a motion to table. That motion was defeated. Then we went back to the reconsideration. That's what we just voted on. That's right. That failed on a on a split vote. So then we're going back to any other uh, exceptions. I believe we finished with Mr. McGilvery. He was in opposition on item P. And I think as I'd stated earlier, I was in, a, uh, in opposition to item P as was Mr. Shoemaker. So that's where we are. That brings us to the end of the consent agenda. All right, so we're ready to move on to code enforcement hearings. <clears throat> Mr. Creel, front and center please, sir, thank you. And uh, well, I'll go ahead okay. and let you do all the talking. Thank you. Item A, Tyler G. and Taylor M. Bertrand, zero, Malvilla Cove. That case has been resolved. Item B, Tyler G. and Taylor M. Bertrand, zero, Malvilla Cove. That case has been resolved. Item C, Lennis L. Coleman Estate, 1630 Pringle Circle. We would ask for 30 days on that. There's a motion by Mr. Gines. Second. And a second by Mr. McGilvery. Any discussion? All in favor? It's, re it's uh, there's a 30 day extension on a 5 0 vote. Note that Mr. Glavin is out of the room. Okay. Item D, Syro Coast Properties, 248 Magnolia Street. That case has been resolved. Item E, Syro Coast Properties, 250 Magnolia Street. That case has been resolved. Item F, Dawn Langston, 356 East Drive. That case has been resolved. Item G, Dawn Langston, 352 Hiller Drive. We would ask for 60 days on that. She is working on it. So move. It's a motion by Mr. Gines, second by Mr. McGilvery. All in favor of the 60-day extension. It's approved on a 5-0 vote. Item H, Dawn Langston, 356 Hiller Drive. We would also ask for 60 days on that case as well. So move. Motion by Mr. Gines. Second. Second by Mr. McGilvery. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Item I, Dawn Langston, 360 Hiller Drive. That case has been resolved. Item J, Barbara Joan Lutz, 0 Malvilla Cove. That case has been resolved. Item K, Chun Wei and Chun Hung Ma, 2241 Baywood Drive. That case has been resolved. Item L, Mitchell Associates, Inc., 211 McDonald Avenue. This property is still in violation. Is there anybody here to speak on or represent Mitchell Associates at, for the property of 211 McDonald Avenue? There being none, this hearing is closed. Okay. Item M, Luann Sigler, 363 Belvedere Circle. That case has been resolved. 
Item N, Lauren Simpson, 1109 DeSoto Street. We would ask for 30 days on that property. So move. There's a motion by Mr. Gines. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Glavin. All in favor? That's a 6 0 vote. Okay. On the 30 day extension. All right, that concludes the code enforcement hearings. That brings us to the routine agenda. Um, Mr. Rohde. Need a motion? <laughs> yeah. Need a motion on the routine addition. So uh, move. Routine agenda. There's a Thank motion you. by Mr. Gines, second by Mr. Glavin. Um, Mr. Gines, you made the motion. You can pose the question to Mr. Rohde. Okay. Well, I'll play George this time. All right, Walt, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Councilman uh, Gines, uh, we do not have the money in the bank yet. We have 230000 That's in step four or five. It's been there for about four days. We should have it uh, within the next seven or eight days. And this Thursday, we have our next conference call with both MEMA and FEMA. And before, during our next uh, council meeting, I'll be able to give you an update on how much more money we got coming in. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Walt. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions? Discussion on the routine agenda? We'll call for the question. All in favor of the routine agenda is presented. It's approved on a 6 0 vote for the clerk. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. By Mr. Gines. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. McGilvery, any discussion? All in favor? It's approved on a 6 0 vote. And we'll take a 10 minute break and then we'll start on the budget workshop. Thank you.